I've got time for another video. If your honeybees are having a hard time, I've got 10 steps for you to follow. I have 10 years of experience beekeeping. I have never, ever lost all of my bees. I have gotten to the point where I've only had a few colonies after trying a non-treatment method from Kirk Webster first few years of my beekeeping and I no longer did that and I switched to Formic Pro. But let me get to that here in a second. Um, here's the 10, 10 things or 10 steps, 10 things to uh, do if you if your bees are having a hard time. If your bees aren't having a hard time, then great, you live in a good area, you're doing a good job. But first of all, keep your, your colonies, your hives, as far away from crop farmers' fields as possible. And I'm in center of Michigan, and there are basically no large tracts of land where nobody's farming. So it's almost impossible for me to keep my honeybees away from crop farmers' fields. The number one reason why, well, I'll show you. Okay, if you've been following my videos for a while, uh, here I am in Michigan. I've been beekeeping for 10 years again, I'll tell you. And 2019, I had a crop farmer out there in May, May, early in the morning on a windy day. The wind was coming from that direction. Two hours later, my bees were dying. So I called the family, I called the family, told them what had happened, and they never came over to apologize. I didn't really want to go to the government right away, so they didn't apologize. So the next day I called the state of Michigan, and they rushed out and took samples. Like They acted like they really were concerned about my honeybees, you know. That's the whole game. They, they act like they're on your side. So a month after they took the samples, yeah, they told me on the phone, yes, my bees died from, from the chemicals that farmer used as a neo... Neonicotinoids, I get that pronounced right. I can't remember the actual brand. But anyway, yes, my bees died from that farmer's chemicals. So then another month went by, another month and a half, and I get this letter in the mail. See, the, the bees that died were mostly nurse bees. And the, the person here, this person here that came out and took samples agreed they look like nurse bees because the chemicals blew into my hives. So here, here we are with this letter from the state of Michigan saying it wasn't windy that day and the farmer did nothing wrong. Okay, so if you have honeybees and your honeybees get killed or are killed by a careless crop farmer, there are laws against that. There are laws against planting, spraying, and doing stuff like that when it's windy. But the crop farmers have no regard for anybody else. They break the laws all the time. And they will get the protection of the government. Why? Because the government's controlled by the corporations. The corporations want to make money selling these chemicals. And the same rich people, there's only like five com companies, corporations that rule the world. These same corporations own stock and hospitals. And they're making money when you get cancer. Okay? That's the whole game. Your food is poisoned. Okay? They want you to get sick. Look at your local residence at your nearest Walmart. Go in there and look. Uh, do they look healthy? Do they look intelligent? No, they're fat and stupid, all right? That's the way you, your government wants you because your government's working for the rich. So basically, keep your honeybees as far away from crop farmers' fields as possible. And you got people on YouTube like Vinyl Farmers, not even in, the, in a crop farming area. You believe he's in Vermont and, he's, and he owns some land. He's not, his bees aren't subject to that. So his bees are doing great. Yeah, no big surprise there. My bees constantly die and as soon as these farmers get out here and start planting i'm going to see bees on their backs right here on this concrete where i can actually notice what they're doing doing this it happens every spring they do it for a couple weeks during the planting season and then after that they're okay but my my colonies are bringing in those chemicals all summer long okay so keep your bees as far away from farmers fields as possible like my fourth or fifth year beekeeping, I, I moved some colonies another mile or so away, and I had them right near a field, but there was a row of trees in between, kind of like right here. And I came came over there, I went over there one day, and I had several colonies that were dead. They were uh, they were new mating nukes. I was trying to make some new colonies. So I know firsthand these chemicals are spraying, they're killing your bees, they're killing you too. 
Uh, my wife has had a double mastectomy. She's lived here for 30 years. Breast cancer does not run in her family. She does not smoke. She does not drink. So I blame these crop farmers. They are killing you slowly, all right? And then uh, number two, use a bee-friendly mite treatment, okay? I tried formic pro, formic acid. My was my actual first treatment I used. I used it for two seasons. The first season it worked. The second season it didn't kill any varroa mites. It, it killed 10 to 15 percent of my queens every time I used it. So, you know, like say for instance, my first my first try was like 20 22 colonies. So I bought one of those buckets at the time they sold them in buckets, and I lost two colonies from losing their queens. So the this. The year after, I had almost 75 colonies, so I spent $400 from Better Bee on this Formic Pro mite treatment. And I, th I thought, okay, it worked the first year. The next year, I don't have to worry about my, my bees. Are, you know, they're going to be okay. And a month after I did the treatment, I noticed my bees were still dying. They still had the varroa mites. So I quickly, I got my videos on my YouTube channel. I quickly bought some of this acylic acid, and I, and I bought... I bought this from Better Bee, and I bought one of the little, little samples, basically a sample bag of this acetic acid for a lot of money. You don't need to buy it from my beekeeping supply stores. You can you can find this on eBay or on Walmart.com. This is like $30 for a 10-pound bag, and this will last forever. And this is a Varox vaporizer. I, I'm watching to see if there's any anything better for treatments, like a quick vaporizing device. But um, right now, this is what I'm doing. I know it's a lot. It's a lot of work because it doesn't kill the varroa mites in the cat brood. So you have to do it several times during the fall to get rid of the varroa mites. Okay. Number three, appropriate size hive. I go through the trouble as my colonies are having a hard time in the fall and during winter. I will remove deeps from them. And here's an example. In the fall, if your colony's having a hard time, they will pick up. If your colony's shrinking and they can't maintain those those uh, frames, they will pick up wax moth caterpillars. And this is an example of what it looks like. So during the winter, late fall, early winter, I'll leave this stuff outside. And I want it to freeze. So I leave it out in the cold. I let it freeze. And then at the end of winter early spring i have to get this stuff someplace where the wax moths can't get to it and i'll show you but first let me show you i'm running out of room in my cellar my cellar is underneath underneath this concrete floor so i'm building another basement so i'll have more room to do this and i won't have to uh right now i'm bringing stuff into the house and it's not working very well so i'll just part of my garage is I just move out of vehicle and stuff in and out. Won't go through the house. Let me show you this. All right, this is basically a ten by ten cellar, and wax moths have not been able to penetrate this this cellar. And I'm with the number of colonies I have. I, I'm running at the end of winter around a hundred colonies, and during the summer I'll, I'll get near two hundred or so. But anyway, I got frames sitting here, and I've checked. The ones I'm pulling out today, I don't have anything new going on. Everything that's in there, it was from last fall. And then I have I have a stairway here going out, but right now I don't have a roof over that. And I'm working on doing something here. I'm going to connect a roof from the garage to the house. But anyway, I also have, if I bring stuff through through my house, there's a $30,000 train layout down here. Do you think I really want to bring stuff through here? And... Every one of these locos on average is $100, and every one of these freight cars on average is $10. So that's how I'm get $30,000 on all this track and stuff. So I, I can't keep bringing stuff through here. It makes a mess. So that's why I'm building another basement. So that was number three, appropriate size hive. And then also, when you're feeding your bees... Don't feed them a GMO product. Uh, I can't find a non-GMO pollen substitute yet. I thought I was going to make some, but it's too much of a hassle. I can't seem to get the ingredients. Uh, here is the sugar that was left over from winter. This is Domino cane sugar. Uh, this will last forever. I will mix this with fresh at the end of fall, early winter for next year. And then... Uh, 
move colony to a warmer environment. You know, my colonies have a hard time. They're shrinking through winter. I'm, I monitor the size of the cluster with a shim. I will put a shim in between the, the mediums and the deep, and I can monitor the size of the cluster. And then if I, I see the cluster getting too small, I will I will bring it in. That was my first bee room there. I will, if you look at my videos, I actually set hives in the windows. And actually, I do uh, I do winter hive inspections in there. Okay, number, that was number five. Move cow into a warmer environment if the cluster if the cluster is getting too small. And number six, do not graft. Uh, right now, the commercial beekeepers aren't back. It's first week of May. They won't be back for another five, six weeks. So I'm doing my mating nukes. So I'm getting set up to do these here in another week. I only do 25% every week. I don't do all of them right away. But anyway, my virgin queens are mating with drones from my property, okay? They do do that. They don't go somewhere else when there's no other bees anywhere. They will mate where these drones fly, okay? So you don't want to graft... Your best queens if you keep doing this after a few years your bees are going to become inferior and they're going to be poor quality my queens are better quality than anything i've ever bought and they can go up against any anybody's queens in the united states and compete with them and probably beat them all right the only thing that they're having a hard time is this, this crop farmers chemicals if i didn't have the crop farmers chemicals they I, I would have been a commercial beekeeper years ago okay they would they'd be doing a lot better because I end up losing queens through winter, and as my colonies shrink, I'm losing queens. Okay, so um, number six, don't graft. Number seven, follow beekeepers in your climate. You know, if you if you follow if you're up north like I'm in Michigan, and if you're following somebody's down in Florida or Georgia, what they're doing is completely different from what you can do. All right. I'm in Michigan. I have hard winters, just like Minnesota's probably worse than, than Michigan. But northern beekeepers, if you do what I do, you're going to be successful. Southern beekeepers, you probably don't need to do this, okay? So, okay, so that's number number seven. And then, uh, again, number eight, winter inspections inside. If I have a colony that's having a hard time, I'll actually open a hive inside. And if I find no queen, I can combine it during the middle of winter with another colony. And number nine, avoid buying honeybees and queens. If you already have honeybees, you can do that. But if you don't have honeybees, you want to get involved with honeybees, do your research. Uh, check references. Make sure you get a quality honeybee. And then if you have colonies, you want to buy queens, you better do your same thing. Do your research. Check references. Because what is going on... These commercial beekeepers, they make money pollinating, and those bees are all wore out, and they're, and they're not that healthy. They're sick. So what they do is they take a lot of the bees. after they get, Before they get their new queen, they take bees and put them in packages along with their old queen, okay? So you're actually getting a queen that you may not, it's probably only a year old. They, only, they do this every year. Commercial beekeepers don't, don't keep a queen after a year. So a lot of these packages sold in the United States have... Poor quality queens wore out, and the bees are no good. They're, they're poor quality too. And last time I bought packages in 2017 for foolish Russian bees queens, those packages had varroa mites. And I did it right here, and half the bees went up to my garage roof and died. And then and ended up with small colonies and big colonies. It was a disaster. And again, they had varroa mites, and they, the queens half the queens died that summer. So, don't buy honeybees. I haven't bought any honeybees since 2017. It's 2023. Okay, and then number 10. Never assume Never assume your, your honeybees are doing okay. I had an incident a couple weeks ago. I have another apiary where I had my bees. And I was going out there once a week. And they, and they seemed to be doing all right. So, I happened to go out there a few days later. And I, and I found three, three colonies that were chilled. They were chilled because they got robbed of their honey. So I, I brought them home and I saved two of them, but one I had one loss. So I assumed my bees were doing okay because I didn't want to drive there every day. I only went there once a week, and I was wrong. So, and then the other thing, think. If you were to sit back 
I think about some of the things before you do them. That's what I do in the morning. I drink some coffee and I think, about what am I going to do that day? Should I do this or should I do that? And the other thing is common sense. Have common sense. Beekeeping is basically common sense and timing. Timing is important, but you got to have common sense. Think about what you're doing. Have some common sense and you'll be okay, all right? Don't be an idiot, all right? Thank you.